Hi, welcome to the Parks and Recreation Commission meeting of June 14th, 2023. Um, I'm calling this meeting to order. Melissa, could you do roll call? All right, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Chair McEwen. Here. Okay. Vice Chair Schmidt. Here. Commissioner Crampton. Here. Commissioner Gibson. Commissioner McCarthy. I think he's absent. And Commissioner Ono, Commissioner Spangler. Thank you. Let's see, our next order of business are, is a presentation on the status of the Parks and Recreation Department operations for April, 2023 through May, 2023. Karen? Thank you, Madam Commissioner. Uh, good evening, everyone. Tonight we have a presentation for you for April and May on our activities that we've been doing the last couple of months and a little sneak peek of what's going on with summer because it's been incredibly hectic and very busy already. So I'm sure they'll give you a little bit of scoop about that. And you may see an unfamiliar face at the table, but some of you may also know him. He's worked for the city for over 25 years. His name is Ryan Nunez, and he has stepped up to be the interim sports center manager um, in place of Andrea Willer. So he will be giving uh, he'll be giving the sports center he'll be giving the sports center report this this evening. Usually Louie starts us off, but he can't tell right until his slide pops up. All so right. there we there go. go. <laughs> Thank you. People planting the plants and catching gophers and um, athletic fields. Um, we had two beach cleanups and uh, prepped all the parks for summer camps. Um, we did a, a resurface in the striping of the pickleball and tennis courts via Paraiso. It came out really good. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen that. Uh, no complaints yet. So I think everybody's playing nice there. Um, we opened uh, Larkin Park back up. Uh, the school and PUSD put a fence up to where we can keep the playground open all the time now. And we've been doing some modifications over there. Uh, we did a re landscaping over at 735 Pacific, the offices. Um, we did some we're doing our mulch uh, adding more playground mulch in our parks right now and will be complete probably at the end of this month um, we did a turf repair over at solicito with help from a grant and uh, we purchased a new sweeper for the sand along the rec trail over at the switchback uh, ongoing still with winter cleanups we're still using two crews just to try to get caught up um, Cal fire, it's been hard to get Cal fire this year. It looks like we're not gonna get them until August. Um, mm. I know. Uh, so fuel reduction's going as fast as we can with two crews and we brought in another modified uh, eater crew also. Um, and just kind of business and usual on all the rest. We've got some grant applications in for green belt maintenance. Oh, preparation vision. So we um, had a couple of special events happen. We'll go through those and we'll update you on field sports, Elistero Hilltop and Schultze programming. So just a general overview, recreation division for fiscal year 2022, which we're gonna exceed this. We offer 298 programs to 30,928 participants. Mm -hmm. That means registrations. That does not mean how many people we saw. They could take a class and we'll see them four times. They could be in a league and we'll see them 12 times. So that's just registrations. Uh, compared to 2019, our revenue is, I, I, I anticipate fiscal year 23 to be um, higher than this, but we are only down by 44,000, 45,000. Our expenditures are less by 546,000, almost 550. And our general fund subsidy is lower by 500,000. And we're doing this with less than half of the full-time equivalent staff that we had um, prior to um, COVID. Um, right now, we've said this before, we're at capacity with our current programs and services. We're in three facilities, 11 outdoor programming sites. This is minimally 160 hours a week. 
rising significantly during May and June to over 420 hours a week with seven people. Um, and that just doesn't include just program supervision. It's all the details and the planning and the things that go on uh, besides that. So, um, so again, we've gone from 15.75 positions in fiscal year 20 to 8.75 positions in 24, but this is including a vacant position and a position that's 0.75 that's dedicated slowly, solely to preschool and nothing but preschool. Um, so we're we're at our limit as far as how many things we can do um, beyond what we're currently doing. And then we held two events, um, unplanned, but um, worked out well um, to kind of assess the need for recreation programs at the in the Casanova and Via Del Monte neighborhoods, also Laguna Grande. So we did a community outreach town hall on May 8th at Casanova, and then we did a fun day in the park at Montecito Park on Saturday, May 13th. The goal was to try and also ascertain the true demand for recreation and programs and services, the wants versus the needs. We also wanted to be mindful of equity and the very different demographics between the Casanova Okanohe neighborhood and let's say Via Del Monte. Um, you know, things have changed. Monterey has changed. If you um, are in the Casanova Oakland neighborhood, it has um, more of an older population. So we're seeing a demand for senior programs there, whereas we didn't have that before. Um, also, Foothill School closed. That has had a tremendous effect on programming in that area. Um, and actually, the playground program at Casanova that we just started this week actually has the lowest enrollment of all of our playground sites when it used to be the most popular. And we're actually drawing people from Marina and Seaside because it's the closest to um, where they live. Um, so not necessarily our um, program participants from the Casanova neighborhood. We also know that the Fremont uh, Street is a divide. It is, people are less likely to want their children to cross Fremont in either direction. It's, even though we've done things to address safety, it's, People, you know, most parents would not feel comfortable having their child cross Fremont. Um, again, we have very limited resources and capacity. We had an excellent turnout. We saw that the greatest demand, which was what we had already kind of noticed, is that it's for special events and one day and drop in programs, not so much the typical uh, preschool five days a week or an after school program. Because again, we no longer have an MPUSD school that is in that for that neighborhood. Um, so we're gonna be rolling some more things out um, as capacity allows, but we um, are also gonna be getting some information out as to what we uh, the true demand is. And we did a mailing, we did on-site feedback um, and an online survey. So we're gonna put all of that together and get that out on the website. And we'll share that link with you so you can kind of see where we're at with that. Um, so that is where we're at with those two events. Um, so summer recruitment, this is something new this year. We, uh, you might've seen it on, um, TV, but we're going to really roll this out for sure. Uh, next summer, um, for recruit, um, not actually, I'm sorry. I said summer recruitment. This is summer marketing. We actually do have a summer recruitment ad, uh, as well that we'll show you, um, at another date. So this is just our. 30 second spot that we just finished. Hopefully the link works. Oh, no sound. <laughs> we did some testing and unfortunately we couldn't get the audio to work. So we'll, we'll see if we can get it for you guys by the end of the meeting tonight. Okay. Thank you. So uh, the other thing was summer camp prep. We, uh, haven't started all of our summer camps, but we have been very busy with the preparation for that. So a lot of this has also been thanks to our parks division and their support because we operate a lot of our programs in parks, but we couldn't do that without their support. Um, and this has been, you know, day camp is 66 years. So there's been 66 years of park support at day camp at Whispering Pines and 70 years of Camp Kinsabi that um, 46 47 years of that has been at Toro Park. And again, we couldn't have done that without the parks division. So 
we installed our first ever flagpole at day camp. And the reason for that is we lost um, some significant trees that used to be our flagpole. So we have a new flagpole. We extended the concrete pad for CQS pool. Um, and you can see that right there. We're getting a new shipping container for storage for CQS. Uh, a lot of prep has gone into preparing Whispering Pines uh, Park, Via Paraiso, Hilltop, uh, Casanova, and um, uh, Camp Kinsabi Toro Youth Overnight Area. Huge, huge support for Chris Mexelsberger, who has helped us set up our pool and bring out our walk in cooler and our picnic tables. It's been He's amazing. We, he can never retire. Um, I know he's thinking he is. <laughs> um, so uh, we also um, have been working very hard on hiring and training staff and ordering supplies and equipment in advance so we can get things bulk prices. But um, Nate Coda, who is the voice from above, has been also very instrumental in pulling all of that together and helping to coordinate the contractors and things that we normally would not necessarily need to do, we had to do. And hopefully these are going to be just one-time expenses this year um, for Camp Kinsabi. So it's been all hands on deck in many ways that we normally would not have um, this summer. So youth field sports, we wrapped up track and field. We had 75 participants at a wait list of 43. We are looking to expand that for next spring if we can get more staff. Uh, we participated in Youth Fitness Day with other agencies, other cities, the Presidio, um, and we won an award for best effort, and that's all of our um, children from our youth track and field program participated in this Saturday event at Monterey Peninsula College. What's next? We actually started summer camps already. We've had beach a week of beach volleyball and a week of soccer. Both of those programs were full with wait lists. Um, the only reason we didn't open up the wait list was we didn't have enough instructors for those. So field sports is doing great. Our adult field sports, we wrapped up our spring spring co -rec, men's and co-rec league um, with 360 participants. Our revenue is definitely up due to online team registration. So we'll see how that works out. Um, and then we just started, so this is May, April, May, but uh, Monday started our uh, summer league for men's and co-rec softball with 50 teams. Then El Estero Park Center is full, preschool is full for next year with a wait list. We also have a strong enrollment in our youth programs, including dance, fish, fencing, chess, and camps. We are expanding programs as we have capacity, um, including dance and arts camps. And then Nate, because he's wearing two hats, he's our recreation supervisor, but he's also still responsible for the El Estero Park Center has been helping with the prep for day camp, CQS, the staff hiring and training. Uh, and that's CPR class right there for our staff. So what's holding us back from offering more programs and expanding is really our capacity. We, it takes uh, time and effort to bring on a new contractor, to get people registered, to get the program in the system. So we have the ability to generate more revenue and have more participation. We just don't have the time in our day. Hilltop Park Center is busy. It's We're going to be expanding programs um, as we can. Um, preschool, uh, our piano lessons are full, ceramics is full, blood drives are full. Our other programs are actually doing extremely well. Uh, Hilltop Park Center is exceeding its revenue projections, especially for contractually offered classes. Um, they are full for Tiny Tot Summer Camp, which started last week. Then we're offering theater for kids. We're expanding ceramics to one more night a week. And we'll have a yoga and tap jazz coming up very soon. Um, Rachel Dice is the coordinator of that center and is doing a great job. But she went from a center with one large room and a small preschool to now a building with 17 rooms. And it's one person. So again, we are just limited by our ability. Um, you know, we're... We're working more than 40 hours, but we're, we can't do much more than we're doing. Schultz is busy. That was our, um, we've got several AARP safe drivers courses. That was one today, room was full. 
Um, so our current programs are doing well. Um, we have also a site for the Alliance on Aging and they use our meeting space. We're seeing a increased demand for our drive through meals with Meals on Wheels and our senior produce distribution. Again, we're expanding more driver safe, safe drivers courses are being offered in June. Um, but again, we are just, we're, what we're hearing from the community is they want us to bring back the travel program, the senior luncheons on um, the special senior luncheons one month, uh, um, one day a month. Um, and then we, we also had the Friday socials for adults with um, accommodations, um, but we just don't have enough time in our day for all of that. Um, and they, there is a demand. And when we're closed, like we were closed for building maintenance last week, when we're closed for Monday holidays, they're like, why did you close? Like they want us to continue offering programs, but we're, you know, we do have to close some days, um, but they definitely miss us when we're not open. So what's next? We are planning for the 4th of July and Halloween. We are in the process of still recruiting some part-time staff and a full-time staff person. Our part-time staff is due to the fact that we did hire um, all of our summer staff, but we always lose a couple before summer starts. We actually have higher enrollment and a wait list for several of our camps, and we want to be able to accommodate those people on the wait list, so we need to hire some more staff. We are wanting to expand our programs based on our capacity and our budget. There is a little bit of um, wiggle room in our budget to add maybe a couple of trips, holiday shopping for seniors and one or two other things. It's just that when we offer a trip for seniors, that's pulling a staff person away from a building for eight or 10 or 12 hours um, that they would normally work during the week. And there still is that demand for that uh, center to be operating. So it leaves a hole that we can't um, cover. Um, we're marketing and also planning for post-summer programs already. And the fiscal year 24 budget was approved um, with basically a, a status quo budget, not really much difference than before. We'll be able to offer a few uh, select programs potentially at Casanova, um, but that is basically what we're able to pull together at this point with the resources we have. And again, we are our family favorites winner for our camp programs. Good evening, Commission. Uh, Sports Center is booming. Summertime, the place is, is rocking. It's doing great. Um, 6,300 active members in the building currently and growing each day. Average weekly attendance over 7,400. Attendance is up 28% for this fiscal year. All areas are doing great. Aquatics, group exercise, gymnasium, the front desk is the hub. It's, it's doing terrific. So yeah, I'm proud of all the staff. I do wanna give a big thank you to Louie and Volta and his guys for keeping the outside of the sports center looking so great. They put in a lot of time and I know they're stretched really thin but I appreciate Louie and his guys. They do all they can to keep that place looking nice. And then Shannon and Brent and the parks helping us coordinate because our sports camp program is over a hundred kids and they help us get over there and get outside for a little bit and come back in the gym and go to the pool. So we use a lot of areas. Um, and so I appreciate Shannon and Louie with all their help making our programs a success. Uh, let's see, personal training. Yeah, Lori's area personal training and she and Marcia are just doing the best they can and their personal trainers are, are doing amazing. So that's a lot of personal training packages sold. They're doing terrific. Fitness. So Lori's also in charge of the fitness area. Um, so group exercise, her bone builder classes, Zumba, cycling, all the participation is up 40%. And uh, yeah, we some there's some people just waiting at the door to get into her classes. So it's she's doing terrific. Volleyball, we've added a night of volleyball due to high demand. It was just Wednesdays. Now we've added Mondays and we're getting at least 25 people per day. Sometimes it gets up to 40. So they just there are times when we need another court so we can accommodate all the basketball and the volleyball at the same time. Uh, futsal is indoor soccer, and they are consistently showing up on Friday nights. They love having that night. They want another night. I just need to figure out another night to give them. 
Uh, Badminton was just Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and we've added Saturdays, and now they requested Thursdays. So we're trying to accommodate everything for badminton as well, and they're a very consistent group. Ping pong is growing tremendously. There's people playing ping pong all throughout the day, so it averages about 24 people per day uh, in the ping pong room. And they're requesting another table. So we'll see. Some lessons. If you've been in the pool area, you know that Tony's area is doing fantastic. Um, that's a lot of private swim lessons and semi-private lessons. Uh, he and his um, assistants are just trying to get as many people in a safe environment to, so their kids can learn how to swim. So over 1,900 total students combined for those two months. That's a lot of lessons. And then it's group lessons. Um, yeah, his revenue is is terrific for those two months. Um, Tony used to have a full time. He had a couple 30 hours. So he had a lot of help. And But he is uh, making the most of, of what he has right now and doing the best he can. And um, people are coming back in the door of the sports center. Just it's it's great. It's a busy place. So we're very proud of everyone. Summer sports camp started June 5th. We got everyone trained up the week before. And for the first three weeks right now, we're at at capacity, which is 105. We have a waiting list. Um, so hopefully the remaining seven weeks go just as well. And that's the part-time staff. They're the ones that make the program. They're the ones that make it safe, make it fun. And the kids want to come back uh, week in and week out. We have a counselor and training program, and that is doing terrific as well. Martial arts, Sensei Scott. Sensei Scott's been with us from the beginning. And the kids love him. And a lot of those kids help assist him now with the younger kids. So it's just you know, he's terrific. The community loves him. The parents love him. And so we're very lucky to have Sensei Scott with us. The painting, so they're on the back side of the sports center now. So they're on the Del Monte side. So they've done a lot and they're, they're doing terrific. It looks great. Um, and then the corbel replacement is the wood up top there. I don't know if you can really see it in that picture. I tried to take a good picture, but I should have zoomed in more. Um, and then we also have new patio furniture on the sun deck and we are having the windows tinted on the ping pong room and all of that's coming along looking great and um sal has been a salvador i don't know he's been a huge help getting a lot of these projects done the aquatic stores all the painting he's there almost every day just checking on things so it's a team effort and i appreciate everyone's help And that concludes our presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, let's see. I think we need the voice from above, Nate, to let us know if there's any public comments. Actually, yep. public comments maybe from um, within the chambers first. Yes. Good, good evening, commissioners. Um, we encourage members of the public to join our meeting via Zoom Gov. Joining on Zoom is preferred because there is no lag time and you're connected live to the meeting. This meeting is also streamed live on youtube.com slash city of Monterey with about, 10, with about a 10 second delay. Um, also on Comcast channel 25 with up to a 90 second delay. If you plan to make public comment, join the meeting using Zoom on the app or by telephone. To join the meeting on Zoom on your computer or phone, use the link or phone number on the agenda at isearchmonterey.org. Since the meeting has started, you'll find the agenda under the recent tab. To join the meeting by telephone, dial toll-free 833-568-8864, then enter meeting ID 160-922-2935 pound. Detailed instructions on using Zoom are also available at Monterey org slash public meetings. To, to make a public comment, raise your hand by using on Zoom by using the raise your hand feature on the bottom of your screen or by dialing star nine. Public commenters will be muted until it is their turn to speak. We also, we also ask that public commenters please turn off your television or computer speakers or go to another room while connected by phone as any background noise will interfere with the broadcast. I will call on each public speaker in the order of their hands raised. And we ask that you please keep your comments to three minutes. 
Um, we look forward to receiving your public comment, and these will be public comments on the presentation. And we'll start with anyone who would like to make a public comment in the chamber, please approach the lectern. No one is coming forward. And let me see if we have anyone online. Hold on one second. We have no public comment online. All right. Thanks so much, Nate. Um, commissioners. I, yeah, I have just a, I, I know some people who are around Via Paraiso Park, Louis. And so I guess there was a comment on new next door that RVs are parking there overnight because the sign's gone now telling them they can't park there overnight. So I saw that post. Uh, it wasn't a sign that, uh, I guess the sign must have blown down in the winter though. The, the pole was rotten, but it was just a no parking from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Yeah. So we're having a new sign made. Okay. But we do call PD when we see the RV yeah. there. And this is just a, co a comment. I guess someone had a gender reveal party there mm -hmm. and let off a cannon and blew out blue pieces of paper everywhere. Oh. Did they did they get fined or are they supposed to pick up their paper afterwards? Shannon, you want to? Yeah. So it, on our field, uh, on our permit application, it clearly says no confetti, no uh, glitter, those type of things, but it is not in the city code and it's not enforceable, but we do ask them not to do those type of things. Okay. Um, well, and <laughs> it could have been someone also without a permit who just had a gathering there. Okay. That happens too. Just wondered, they, I got a lot of complaints from some people I know from there. Yes, everyone that Melissa and I talk to, we are very clear about what to do because it ends up in being a huge maintenance thing for parks and or it ends up in the bay when it's at El Estero or the beach. It's just not... A good thing. So I guess the only other comment I'd make is, I mean, you guys are working as hard as you can, but the having wait lists to me, that's disenfranchising working families and small children. Does the city manager office ever see your report as to how much you're waitlisted and the limitations on what you're able to offer because you don't have enough people? We do share updates with him, but we probably could do better showing more actual statistics. It's just a challenge putting together statistics and everything right now with everything we have going on. But we've been working as a team knowing that we need to tell our story a little bit better to help them really understand. We try to verbalize that and share as much information as we can. I think it's hard for people to really envision um, the type of work that it goes into. You know, we work so other people can play. And we constantly hear things like, you must have a great job to just play all day, or you must, oh. you know, you must have a great job at the, you know, they told Andrea Willer, you know, you, you must be in great shape getting to work out all day, all the time. <laughs> they don't really realize how much we have to do in order for other people to be able to recreate. So we know we need to improve on how we tell our story and tell it better with stronger statistics. Okay, just wondered. I'd like to comment as well on that. I mean, we filled this place at that meeting regarding Parks and Rec. I mean, that's telling the story. I, I'm i astounded that the budget didn't reflect the community's request for restoration of all these things and more generosity to Parks and Rec. I mean, what else do we need to do? Cry? mean <laughs> that, that's a literally the million dollar question right uh -huh. um and part of it would have been that the study sessions happened close to the end of the year when the budget was probably pretty much already was you know was already completed so we're hoping within you know before mid-year or around mid-year that maybe we'll have some reconsiderations there especially if we continue to be as successful as we've been because it, everything i'm hearing is exceeding expectations and the second line under that is really tired, but the, mm -hmm. I'm hoping, as you're suggesting, that that it'll be recognized. But I, um, what as commissioners can we do better in terms of advocacy? Yeah. So I think advocacy to the city manager to council. 
um, letters. Yeah, I mean and that definitely did happen, but you know, to it it can't and can not be just a one time thing. Right. Um, but we we are working very very hard, and the sports. I mean, both rec sports and our parks. I mean, parks is got 750 plus acres um, and they may not be where had as big of a reduction, but they've had reductions consistently since, you know, 2000 at least. Um, so, you know, we were kind of rec and sports center were kind of hit hard because of COVID. Um, but now the demand is there and, um, you know, sports centers open 88 hours a week. Um, it's supposed to go to like a hundred hours in, Jul in July. Um, but it, again, they're probably at, well, with Andrea gone, they're, um, even shorter staff than they were. Um, so, you know, it, there's just, at some point you reach a, a diminishing return where you can't do more than, and, and that, and we're also finding it hard to find part-time employees that want to stick with us for a long period of time. So, um, that's been a challenge as well, but, um, we definitely, um, you know, telling the story and telling the story to people, uh, you know, that you come across that we don't necessarily get to see every day. And the part-time people who do stay with us, especially the ones that are exceptional and enjoy working for uh, parks and recreation, we have a thousand hour rule. They can't work more than a thousand hours a year. So um, we, a lot of times we run into that that bind where you get really strong people, you get them all trained up, they're excited to work, they want to work more. Uh, but then there's a, a law that we can only have them work a thousand hours. So that's um, a challenge that we face quite often as well. And there was one more thing that, another thought that you triggered for me, but I can't think of it right now. <laughs> I just wanted to comment to Louis that those courts at Via Paraiso Park are gorgeous. And every time I drive by, they're either using the tennis or the pickleball or both. So they are getting a lot of use and they're, they're stunning. Congratulations. Honestly, I just have to say the pickleball versus the tennis thing seemed like mission impossible, but it's been pulled off and it is wonderful. Thank you to everyone. And Shannon, I think you were quite involved in the negotiation. Yeah. And a bird told me that you're very good at that. Oh, who? Yeah, a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I haven't even been there, but I mean, the fact that we're not hearing anything from pickleball and tennis and the same yeah. thing with our recreation, our registration software, we're not hearing complaints to me, that's a success. So um, it's good. And actually I was just watching, I, I would have to find it, the link. Like Andre Agassi and Andy Roddick are playing pickleball. <laughs> I mean, it is, you know, when your knees or when you can't move, like it, it's like he, Andre Agassi was like, I'm going to play this till I die. This is amazing. So it's, <laughs> it's growing. And we just have learned already what everyone else in the across the country is learning is that you really cannot have uh, pickleball in a, in a residential neighborhood. And there's always going to be a bit of a conflict between pickleball and tennis. And so we need to, you know, we need, when we're planning, we need to be mindful of that. I guess the only other comment I make is, you know, it might be worthwhile just keeping track of numbers. You know, how many children are in a program, how many are waitlisted, you know, how many, what you could do if you had more staff. I mean, I just think, you know, city management office and budget, it's all about numbers. So keeping yeah. just track of numbers would be really useful, I think. I think maybe if we attended um, mornings with, City manager. Yeah, we could do that. I'd yeah. I'd be happy to do that in the next one. Oh, that'd be great. Speaking of numbers and building off of Commissioner Gibson, showed me the numbers from the budget and the allocation. And uh, I drove it here this evening going, I, I want to be able to help. I want to be able to is do your, more than what I. Is your microphone on? This one's mine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this one's mine. But we're sharing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and after seeing the numbers, it's really jaw dropping at the allocation to the parks, lack to the parks and everywhere else. Um, so when you ask what well, what can we do as commissioners, I mean, city manager and writing letters and just knowing those numbers, you guys always put on such a positive face and I totally appreciate it. But I also need to know those numbers. I need to know what you guys need so I can help fulfill my role as a commissioner 
possibly provide that. So um, thank you for continuing to do what you do, but also thanks for sharing those numbers and waking and, me up. And it's been um, a growing experience for us because during COVID, you know, we lost all of yeah. our uh, our computer software experts, you know, everyone who used to do all our software and run all our reports and do all our revenue and do all of that. They were, most of them were all laid off. And so we've been lucky to have a few come back in different capacities and help us. Uh, we also did not have an administrative analyst anymore. So as we're trying to rebuild, you know, we have a lot of those, you know, capacities or strengths too, but when you're trying to do a lot of other things, it's just one of those things get pushed to the bottom of the pile but it really should be at the top. We we try to raise it up, but it just come, it gets getting keeps getting buried. Uh, the city has uh, approved for an analyst position in our department, so hopefully that will help us as well. And Luis had multiple vacancies in his area, and it looks like he may be able to fill a couple of positions here shortly. So hopefully Good. that's going to be helpful as well. So I just want to be fair and make sure I'm sharing all of that information with you. Appreciate it. Madam, Madam Chair, um, we did have a, um, a member online raise their hand right when we closed public comment. Um, would you like to take that public comment at this time or do you want to wait? Oh, let's take it now. I think that's reasonable. Great, thank you. So Jean Rash, you are um, able to speak. Please go right ahead. I see that you're unmuted, Jean, but we cannot hear you. Madam Chair, it looks like she's having a difficult time right now. So we will, um, I will mute her and then we'll come back to her in a little bit. So, so please continue. Okay, thanks so much, Kate. Um, Commissioners, any further comments? Okay. Um, let's see. Our next order of business is approval of the minutes from our meeting of Wednesday, April 12th. Do we have a motion to approve? Second? A second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. So approved. Um, So any further public comments on items not on the agenda? If you would like to make a general public comment, please raise your hand by using the Zoom feature or star nine on your phone. And Jean Rash has her hand up. We will try that again. Go right ahead, Jean. Yes, we're, we're not hearing you, Jean. If you would like, um, you can call 833-568-8864. That's 833-568-8864. And the meeting ID is 160-922-2946. And we can try um, try again. Thanks, Dave. We'll move on to um, yes, to our speaker here in the council. Either I'm getting shorter or this podium's getting taller. Uh -oh. <laughs> I will make a make a sidebar comment that the pickleball Ryan Ranch project and CIP it was very very well received we did good voting and when they we were holding up our cards and everything the audience was really enthusiastic and happy with it so we got to get going on that project definitely and there's not a neighborhood out there to disturb anybody hi everybody I'm Lee Whitney from the Glenwood neighborhood association president and NCP NCIP rep I'm here uh, representing my neighborhood and that of Alta Mesa um, each of our neighborhoods border the old capital project. Mike Dawson of um, Alta Mesa is aware on a very important event. 
is fishing off the coast of Mexico with his daughter, <laughs> and she outfishes him three to one every time. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, pre-COVID, Mayor Collied um, called Mike Dawson and I together and said, "Put a committee together with your neighborhood. Come up with some ideas for the old capital. We need your input." Neighborhood is real important to this. So we started everybody together. We had meetings and a lot of wine at Mike's house. <laughs> we got the big map made and everything. And we came up with some really, really good ideas for a park for everyone. And we even went on a field trip. The Monterey PD took us. We had three officers escorting us around. And it was a very interesting uh, and learning, good learning experience, too. Um, Keeping in mind the city of Monterey's existing park and recreation areas, we came up with some really great ideas not to reinvent the world, but so it all fits together which, what is consistent with our city right now. All we're asking is a seat at the table when the plans are going forward for the old capital project. NCIP has given monies for the cleanup. And for the general plan, which is going to take a while, I think it'll be our Christmas present. It'll be that about then. But it's a plan and it's a start. And we can still keep working on ideas. So um, give us a call. Send us an email. Whenever it's time to get together, we would like to sit at the table. And I think it'll be very productive for the neighborhood and for the city. Um, instead of trying to go through this to do it, if we can kind of, you know, Put it on the whiteboard. No, you can't have horses. That's against the law. Okay, you can do this. But we've got some really good ideas to for that 135 acres to really make it a great open space and a park for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for all the good work you're doing. Um, anyone else? Anyone else wishing to speak? Madam Chair, we do have a caller. Last. Three of two zero zero. Please okay. unmute yourself by dialing star six. Hi, thank you. It's Jean Rash. Yay! Thanks for your thanks for your patience. Um, I I'm calling as the president of the Monterey Vista Neighborhood Association, and we want to thank especially Louie and Karen for the incredibly rapid um, completion of the pickleball court at um, Via Paraiso Park. It seemed like the NCIP funding came through the first week in April and the, the council approved it. And by April 26th, 27th, my husband and I were up there wandering around doing what I affectionately call my pickleball rounds and all the repairs were completed and there were a couple of days of drying until people could be on the courts. That's about a three week turnaround. Uh, I was stunned and I thank you. And it was great to see all the work of the uh, mediation and the, and the design implement, implemented perfectly and so rapidly. So really thanks a lot, uh, very appreciated. As to um, your comments about getting more attention for Parks and Recs. I too watched the seminar um, on the Sports Center. I was so impressed with all the affection with which it was held by the public. Um, they really came out. So I too was surprised that there's not more funding for repeating, including, you know, retrieving all the positions so you can can expand. And I think the idea of giving them straight data, giving um, Mr. Usler straight data, like we, we want Sunday night for more volleyball. We've filled it five times a week and now we want a sixth or whatever the numbers are would, would help a lot. And um, there was something else, but um, I, everything Lee said, great ideas. All right. Thanks a lot. Good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Jean, for your public comment. And Madam Chair, we have no other public comment. All right, public comments are now closed. Um, we are about to receive a report on commission appointment process and select chair and vice chair for 2023-2024. Shannon. Yes, so 
first of all, we will want to acknowledge Ellen at our next meeting. She is still the chair right now. Um, and this is for fiscal year 23-24. So things have shifted from a calendar year to a fiscal year now. So we wanted to make sure we got in before July 1 to appoint a chair and a vice chair for fiscal year 23-24. Uh, the chair for this coming year, it will be Christian Schmidt, who has served as our vice thank chair you, you. and has never yeah. served as chair before. So this is great. And then our vice chair would be Sid Crampton, who is um, also fairly new to the commission and has never served as chair or vice chair. Um, so uh, Christian will serve a full um, fiscal year and um, Sid will serve as the vice chair. And then next year it will be Sid as our chair. And I believe Justin will be our vice chair, which is great getting new commissioners having that opportunity. So that is what we're presenting tonight is um, see if there's any discussion and a motion and a vote. Um, and then at their next Parks and Rec Commission meeting, we would officially switch everyone over to their new role. Any questions? Exciting. Are I don't you know. Ready for it? I'm, it's I'm really hard. I've never had as much of a title, but I have good example and uh, good support. So I look forward to it. Uh, any any other commissioner comments? Um, question the choice of vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, public comment. Anyone in our council chambers? All right. Uh, Nate, anybody on the line who has an opinion about this? If you'd like to make a public comment online in regard to the chair appointment and vice chair, please raise your hand using Zoom or star nine if you're on your phone. We have no public comment. Okay, so public comments on this item are now closed. Um, further questions, comments? Shall we vote? Would someone like to make a motion? I move that we approve Christian as chair and Sid as vice chair. Seconded? Second. All right. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No one opposed, no one opposed. All right. Well, we come to that staff comment time. Um, Karen, comment. Thank you so much. Uh, just a couple of quick updates. Uh, first, starting out with Laguna Grande, uh, we did certify the environmental documents through the JPA as well as Monterey City Council, and they adopted the plan. and. Seaside and the Monterey Regional Park District is also planning to do so later this month or early next month. So that means all three agencies plus the JPA uh, would have certified the environmental documents if all goes as planned, as well as adopted the plan. And then our next step is going to be the environmental document process, which probably will take us six months to a year. I would lean more towards a year um, to get the, get through all of that. But it's been a really great partnership with the Regional Park District and the City of Seaside. And we just continue to work really hard with them. So that's great. Um, old Capital Site, uh, we have received the RFP. We are, have been looking at the submittals and there may be some challenges with the budget and with CEQA, but we've had multiple meetings and we're working through all of those. There's a process and I think we'll get through it, but it just takes us a little bit of time to get through that. We're very fortunate that we got three bids. So we have three choices to look through and to decide if we can get through. I know we're really busy this summer, but if at all possible, we'll try to have it on an award of contract um, at the end of July is what we're aiming for the July 18th meeting. So if, if things go well, we'll be on that July 18th meeting. I hope to put the title on the agenda tomorrow and um, keep things moving that way. Um, let me see what else. Uh, we did a, a really fun um, event at Montecito. I don't know if you guys had um, heard some of the details about that, but um, Shannon and her team did an excellent job out at Montecito having a fun day and gathering information from from families and participants about what they'd like to see in their neighborhood and at Casanova Oak Knoll. Then we also did a charrette style town hall meeting at 
Casanova Oak Knoll Center itself and got feedback from the public there about what kinds of activities and programs and services they would like to see at that center. And we also did the survey and everything as Shannon said. And so we've been compiling the data and hopefully have that published very soon and have it out on the website for everyone to see. And uh, we are working towards uh, restoring services as our, as our capacity allows. Uh, we did have positive feedback from the public about things like kids night out or mom's morning out and uh, movie in the park and those types of things. So those are definitely exciting events for us to, to work towards. Um, I really wanted to thank Ryan for stepping up to be the interim sports center manager. He's been doing a great job the last few weeks. We've had our hands full with summer, um, but it's been fantastic working with you in that new capacity. And I really can't express um, how much this team is doing with the, the resources that we have. It's truly remarkable. So thank you to each and every one of you and everyone on your team. Uh, you really, you make the magic happen and the community and the city of Monterey are so lucky to have you. I also wanna thank our commissioners uh, for your undying support that you guys give us all year round, but especially the last few months because there was budget meetings and there was NCIP meetings and there was the sports center study session and um, all of you really stepped up and supported us and that means the world to us. Let's see. We talked a little bit already about the sports center study session, but for those of you who weren't there, it was a really great turnout and it was remarkable to feel um, that support from the community. Um, that was really an amazing time. So just want to say thank you again to everyone for all their hard work. Thank you so much. Uh, Shannon? So I, I did cover a lot in our update, um, but I just want to say thank you to the commissioners because we did have several conversations and you reached out for NCIP questions and budget questions and study sessions. So I want to say thank you very much. And we're always here to answer and provide as much information as we can, because you guys can do a lot for us um, to help us uh, get that word out. Um, and then I want to say thank you to the recreation team. Um, everyone is, you know, going into summer is we're, we're very, we are tired, um, probably more tired going into this summer than we have been in the past. Usually we're tired at the end of summer, but we're, we're feeling the, the stress for some reason this, um, year, um, you know, our, our day camp is full with a wait list, our camp Kinsabi, we've had to open up additional spots because there was, um, people, like I said, Camp Kinsabi is celebrating 70 years, day camp 66, the playground program is probably 70 plus years already. Plus we're doing a wide variety of field sports camps and then Lego and chess and woodworking. And there's just a huge list of camps that we're doing um, and tiny tot summer camp and, and everyone is doing something different. Rachel and Sarah were at day camp, helping get day camp in order. Rachel's taking an active role in day camp as well as doing all of her hilltop work. Um, Sarah has been helping with the administration, Melissa and Sarah are going to be focusing on some marketing and some photography this summer as well. Nate has been really stepping up with Camp Kinsabi and day camp and prep, um, but also getting more actively involved in the role of a supervisor, um, with the hiring and the recruitment. Um, the challenge is that Nate is also still responsible for a community center that's you know, in, in its own job, it, its own job. It's not just, um, something that you can do part-time. Um, so, um, and then Brent, he's very busy right now as well, because he's got sports camps going all week long. He's got the softball league in the evenings. Um, and then he's got, um, Roy Hobbs baseball and the Pecos league on the weekend. So Solicito is booked and basically uh, short of, you know, between 10 AM and 7 AM, there's no field sports operations, but otherwise it's a seven day a week operation right now for field sports. Um, so doing that with one person, um, you know, everyone is just taking on more, um, and doing a little bit of everything, um, to try and just keep everything going. So it's, we work really well together. We're a really good team, but we just, um, you know, at some point we need to get a little more resources just to, we want it because we always want to do more and we love programming and we love all of those things, but it's just the challenge is finding that time. So thank you everyone for hoping for a really good summer. We're excited. We are excited. We do. 
we, this is really what we work for all, all year long. So we're excited. Thanks so much, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Louis. Okay, I'll keep this short, mm -hmm. but uh, let's see. We're concentrating most of our time on weed removal and uh, the storm damage. We'll, we're probably doing that for another two months. Um, we did install a beach mat, our first, of, uh, our first attempt at this, an NCIP project that was a couple years old. So we've got our first beach mat out there by the beach house, and it seems to be doing pretty well. Um, we may put a, another one out there. We have we we do have another one that we could put out there, and we may put a T at the end of this one. So we're we're seeing how it goes for a couple of weeks, and then we might add to it, and we might add another one. Um, so that's kind of uh, a new thing that we have. Um, we get a lot of help from the volunteer gardeners, and I, I don't think I mentioned them enough, but uh, they're a big help for us. The VIPs that we have, so. Donna and your crew. Small but mighty. Small but mighty. <laughs> they get a lot of work done. And uh, so that's uh, that's all we have. Thanks so much, Willie. You're welcome. Did you say a T at the end of one of the? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm like, are they swinging? The okay. Cup of tea. Okay, got it. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for being here tonight and stepping into that role. Um, do you have comments for us? Uh, thanks, Louie and Shannon. Just wanted to thank Karen. So she's, she's always available to bounce ideas off of or get input from. So yeah, thanks for everything, Karen. And thank you, commissioners. Look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. All right. So commissioners, um, Sid, you want to start? Sure. Um, I would like to follow up with the comments I made about um, us attending the mornings with the city manager. Um, I'm sure there's been some demographic changes in addition to your your data that shows where the the funds are most needed. And I would love to have that to kind of act as a, a bit of a lobbyist or you know maybe just a pain um, in Hans's side. But uh, I think the more we're, we do that, uh, the better. And sometimes coming from a, a different point of view, a different voice, I think helps. And I'd be happy to to volunteer to do that. Thank you, Sid. Donna? And I guess I'd go along with Sid. Sid, I wouldn't do that too. I mean, I I think it's time. I, I, I looked at the budget and I was shocked mm -hmm. that you were the only, you and museums were the only two departments that have not recovered personnel. Everyone else is almost up to 100% what they were pre-COVID. Pre so there's something wrong with that. Anyhow. But I will say, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> it's a senior no moment. Be a no, no. The thing is, I did, <laughs> I, I did. I wonder though, uh, publicity. You know, I know that uh, King Sabi. I know of I, I, uh, the father and his daughter and his granddaughter have all attended. He attended the very first King Sabi. His daughter went. She was then a counselor, and now their granddaughter is doing it. And so I'm just curious if, I mean, pictures, PR goes a long way sometimes. That sounds like a Monterey Weekly article. I think it sounds like a Monterey Weekly article. And, and Facebook and, and Facebook Twitter. And <laughs> the tip desk, Monterey Weekly, and you just know oh, we'll see if, if Jason will do it. I think that's a, not this Jason, another Jason. Yeah, Justin, sorry. But the Jason <laughs> I know it told me about, it. I thought, wow, that sounds pretty interesting. But yeah, I, say, I think, you know, the fact that you guys do all this, I think working families need to know that when they're waitlisted, it's because you just don't have personnel. Mm -hmm. I'd like to add another thing. I think last year you did an open house or had the commission go over to Camp Kimsabi. Are we doing that this year? Yeah. Thank you. Because oh, yeah. I, I missed last year and I was very upset. I, I, I am that. trying to get uh, dates because uh, Camp Kimsabi, I'm sorry, starts Monday. Okay. Um, and we'll go for six weeks. Um, last day of all summer programs is July 28th for recreation. So um, I am trying to figure out if it's a couple of days for lunch or dinner. Um, yeah. Dinner would be camp, dinner and campfire, but yes. That would be awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Yeah, I showed up tonight with a few questions. I'm probably gonna leave with a few more, but you're gonna, I got your emails, but you gave me a lot more answers. Um, and I appreciate that. Um, just to be more of a commissioner, more of a help to our community, 
you guys are such heavy lifters. It's pretty inspiring. But with the heavy lifting that you're constantly doing, you almost make us believe that you don't need the help that you need because you're so good at doing it. So um, I appreciate that. And it, it's not lost on on me. But the numbers, I mean, not even some 50% compared to 100 plus in other departments. So well done. But um, I want to do more of a part to try to help you guys lift the lift that you guys are lifting. So thanks. Likewise, um, I'd like to be on that roster, you know, for the Hans Usler warnings in Monterey yeah. talk, and maybe we can just make sure okay. that there's, maybe we can make sure that there's just always one of us there, and, um, you know, with a face and a few words, um, it was effective for the pickleball people. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you, one and all. It's such a pleasure. Um, I love whacking that gavel, but I will have to pass it on to Chris. But maybe again in six years, right, right. you know, if I'm still capable. Anyway, um, thank you. And um, Lacey. Well, it's really, oh. it's really great to be in person with you guys. So I've I've missed it and. Um, I think we all kind of agree with this, but what you do is so essential to making this such a wonderful place to live. Like I was at Via Prizo Park, uh, I think two weeks ago, and the Monterey High was having an event there. Santa Cl Catalina had some, had a little group there. I was there and the Monterey High students were um, coming down from their event and they were on the pickleball ball court and it was looking beautiful. And then there was a, a large group of senior citizens on the pickleball court and they were joining together and playing against each other and laughing hysterically. And it just made me so happy that um, we get to be a part, even a small part of what makes it so great to live here. There's so much wonderful community happening in the parks. So thank you for keep, keeping them looking nice. Um, I'm impressed when I hear the numbers, like 50 co-ed softball teams. That's incredible. I just think about all that wonderful interaction people are having in person with each other, laughing, having fun, getting exercise. It's just so good. So good for us. So that's really great. And then Louie, I thank you for thinking ahead. You do a lot of thinking ahead, a lot of strategy that really helps keep us looking great, but also for safety, like think about yeah, Cal Fire can't come till a little later than we want, but I know your team's out there thinking about what you can do. So I just appreciate that. And Ryan, thank you for stepping up. I really appreciate you filling in there because the sports center is so vital to our community. So appreciate you guys. Thanks, Lacey. Justin. Yeah. There we go. Just um, you know, what everyone else has said so far. I'm always kind of last, but um, I think that seeing the numbers and just the, even the percentage of staff, I didn't realize, you know, you hear it, but you don't, when you see it on paper, like that's drastic, the, the reduction and, you know, seeing how it's been over the past, you know, 20 years, even how it's just feels like it's slowly going down. And then after COVID, it's just really hard to come back from that, but you're doing really, really good. It's amazing. The numbers and the revenue and just the, 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 the enrollment is back is, is good because that, you know, that means that's, is, again, it's a number, but then when you go out and you see it's kids having fun and they're in the in coming from the communities, especially the playgrounds um, that I'm really familiar with, because it's the local kids, it's the neighborhoods and they're they're walking down and they're spending their, they get to spend their summer with their friends. And it's, you know, that's always been a really special part to me. So I'm really glad that you guys are doing that and you're doing such a good job. Louie, you and Tice and Mike and Dominic are this everything looks really good and you guys are working all the time it's you know thank you guys it's been awesome and that you guys are a pleasure to work with mm -hmm. ryan that's it's good to see you again and mm -hmm. it's awesome that you stepped up and you know the sports center is doing amazing it's, it's really amazing seeing what you guys have done during all of this so thank you again um i think that's about it all right thank you justin um any other comments i have to admit smart work is great I just want to breeze through, you know, when I go to the sports center, it's very nice. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So our next meeting.
Put it on your calendars, folks. It's Wednesday, July 12th at 5.30. And now our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. It's <laughs> fun. It's, it's really fun.